Cats. Hello and welcome back to EGL. We are here at the Mad Cats Winter Championship and I have brought Flux into the casting area. He will be casting the next game with me, but let's talk a little bit about the game that just happened off stream. Uh, now, you were, you were playing Refuse and you won that 3-1. How did that, how'd that feel? Because it, it looked like a little bit of a rivalry between the two teams. A little bit. There's a bit of history there. Obviously, Moose is ex-teammates with Crazy, so they have a bit of banter about mm -hmm. like, who's beating who. Um, I mean, AJ had a bit of disagreement in-game <laughs> with a couple of my teammates. But, um, yeah, they, I mean, we played them in pool play yesterday. Uh, extremely close game, you know, some coin flip maps. And they, got, they managed to clutch at the important times. And today, we, we kind of stepped up uh, on our hard point game, took both hard points. Um, and then, yeah, we, we kind of dominated the search. And then, again, it went to overtime in CTF, and they clutched it out again. So it was a really good game. They're a really good team, and I expect them to like, make a good loser bracket run. Well, I actually tweeted out the scores of that last game because you seem to go <laughs> particularly big. 41 and 19. I believe four captures and 13 defends. <laughs> you said to me after the game, about 38 of them was with grenades. You seem to be quite yeah. famous for your grenades. Yeah, I mean, uh, I became a little bit notorious for uh, running fast hands, danger close, two nades. And um, I noticed that in the first map, like a lot of refuse were kind of go, uh, favoring lightweight over using flat jacket. Uh -huh. So I thought that was kind of thing I could abuse. And I th that kind of proved true oh, on the last map, Raid, because I literally got about 10 two-piece grenade like, clutch kills all the time. I was just, I, was, I, I called my, the class Pearl Harbor because I just continuously bomb <laughs> the, the opponents. So. Little controversial uh, name of the class there. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about your team here, because this isn't the TCM from Gfinity because Rich is ill. How's Kyle kind of picking up? Is he doing well? Is he, is he meshing with the team? Um, yeah, absolutely. I, I've got nothing but praise for Kyle. Uh, he's played like, fantastic since stepping in. Obviously, we got literally no practice time coming in. Uh, Rich pulled out last minute, uh, and Kyle's just stepped in, and he's doing a sterling job, to be honest with you. I mean, uh, Rich is obviously uh, a dominant submachine gun player on this game. Obviously, he's, he was notorious for using an AR on a mod three, but uh, on the, on this game, he's become a dominant sub player. And uh, Kyle, uh, he's he's coming to his own on this game. To be honest with you, obviously, he's had some great performances with Aware, and uh, like we couldn't ask for a better pickup at this moment in time. We're meshing really well. Obviously, we've got Marky on the anchor, uh, and then we've got me, Moose, Kyle uh, in hard points, and we're kind of like at the moment we're just like one of us tends to go off. I mean. Uh, yeah, obviously, like you saw that I went, I went huge on that raid, but uh -huh. you should have seen the slums. I mean, Moose and Carl were on some Yeah, Moose dropped 45 level. kills, Yeah, I Moose dropped 45, Carl dropped 37. So 40 bombs all round. Yeah, they were, just, they were just absolutely going in. Okay, now, I always found it quite interesting. This was pointed out to me the other day. Looking at the team sheets, the team you're in currently, if you changed you for Momo, is the team that come top 24 at EGL8. Yeah. So you're the difference. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, the, obviously, the difference in skill between me and Momo is oh. the difference between top 24 and top, top six. No, Which no. is quite interesting because we're going to see him play now in the tech lineup. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. That's, that's not true. But um, I mean, they've got a bit more experience under the belt. I think they've all come into their own on this game. Um, and yeah, I think, I think they've, they've just been performing exceptionally well. Okay. Now, we were, I was watching you play, and obviously you were playing, so we didn't catch the actual uh, Infuse game, but they went to fifth map. Yeah. It was very close from what I've been told. What do you think of Infuse this event? Have they, you know, is Tommy working with that team? Are you worried about playing them at all? Um, I think, uh, I, look, just look at the roster on paper. It's just, it's just, it's just stacked. It is, it is. It's a absolutely stacked. Naughty talent, roster. It? I mean, Tommy's an exceptional player. Jake, Josh, Vintage, they're all just, they can literally all t take over a game, like individually. And I mean, maybe thus far, like obviously with the group stages, maybe they haven't been like playing full throttle yet. And then they've played Orbit, obviously, and Orbit have run them really close. But uh, they've obviously managed to come through in the end. I think uh, we still maybe haven't seen the best out of them yet. I still think they, they could, I, I still think if they catch fire, they could still take the event. Interesting fact, maybe, which is that I learned about Infused only an hour ago. Um, they're playing music through their, their internal system when they play. Whilst they play. Whilst they play. I mean, they were talking about, because um, they gave them the headset, listen to our comms before, just before we play. Put it on, and they've hooked up an MP3 player, so there's music playing in the background. Do you think that gives them an advantage to pump them up, or is this uh, just something that they've, they've taken on for no real reason? Uh, I'm <laughs> obviously, it could, it could well, like, pump them up, but I think, like, more importantly, they should be listening to their comms and like, their game sound. But uh, I think like, I like to listen to a bit of music before the game to pump me up. But like in game, I tend to just like get down to business. But you know, whatever floats your boat. I mean, uh, I don't know what their choice of track tracks were, but um, yeah. I yeah, I was surprised as you. I don't know if they kept it on the entire game. They probably yeah. turned it off when yeah, they got yeah, the yeah, two-two. Yeah, but yeah. 
Most okay, definitely. Let's talk about the other team here. The the name on everyone's lips. This event, kind of, they're kind of the favourites to win this one. Let's talk about Epsilon. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to see them going up against Tech very very shortly. What do you think of Epsilon at the moment? Is this the team to beat in Europe? Uh, yeah, I do think they're the number one team in Europe currently going to this event. I think like, it, somebody's going to have to pull out a hell of a performance to beat them. Well, they're undefeated so far in this tournament. Do you mm -hmm. think you can beat them? Uh, I, I actually do think we can beat them. I mean, we played them in groups. Um, we took the first half point. We were on a hype. Uh, we've gone into Search and Destroy, and Search and Destroy is historically our best game type. Uh -huh. I mean, we took a, a little bit of a lead in the Search. It was about, it was about three all, but we had full streak, so we were kind of in advant an advantageous position. But we kind of like... Uh, like we kind of messed up a bit using our streaks and we choked a few rounds. It was really close. Came down to some 1v1s. I mean, and they ended up coming like 6-4 victors. But um, we easily could have taken that map. And then uh, CTF went into double overtime after we had a 1-0 lead and full streaks again. And they managed to peg it back. I mean, like they, ju they just like, again, they're similar to, to Infuse. They have players that can just take over the game. You know, Jerd, Mad Cat, Swanee, Shane just does some mad flag run and just gets it out somehow. You don't even know how. But... Um, like, they're all exceptional players. I mean, we, uh, we ran them really close. To first, like, we took the first hard point. They kind of gave us a bit of a slap in fourth hard point, but um, on fourth map, um, hard point slums. But um, it, it, it was, I reckon, if we meet them later in the tournament, we're going to have to be on our A game, but we can take them, but we have to take the search and destroyers next time. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. It's kind of interesting, really, because you are the two teams going over to, at the moment, I say at the moment, but I think it's pretty much just going to be you two, that are going over to MLG Columbus for Ghosts. Yeah. So if you get to play, maybe we kind of see which team is better and, and ready for the next game. How are you, how, what is the plan for TCM, the warm-up for Ghosts? Because, I mean, it's, what, two weeks after release? Yeah. Is it, are you just all going to get in one house? Are you, have you got a, a schedule? Uh, because, like I said, that's not an awful lot of time to prepare for a new game going no. up against, admittedly, you know, the hardest competition in the world. Yeah. Um, we, uh, our plan is really just to get the game as early as possible, you know, uh, get the game, grind it for two weeks, try and f find out all the overpowered things in the game that we can abuse at the event. <laughs> uh, we just want to, we want to try and get the, like, learn this. Obviously, you got to know what the modes are, but we want to get down what the respawn types are and learn the spawns as, as quickly as possible. But now, you've actually played Ghost already, haven't you? You have been at yeah. an event. How did you find the game? Um, I, th I think it's... It, I'm not really sure how it's going to play out because we only played limited number of modes, but I, th I think it can be a good title. It's similar to like Mod 3, maybe a mix of Black Ops 2 in, involved, but looks like the game's starting up now. Yep, let's